The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m., Friday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. We got markets in negative territory yes, uh, right now. Yesterday, quite a day, quite a volatile session, quite a strong finish to the markets. This morning, we were touching 3,080 on a couple occasions, even a few occasions last night on the S&Ps. We've backed off a bit, currently trading at 3,067. You back it up to the volatility on yesterday. I mean, check out the day. The lows early, early yesterday, three in the morning Thursday, okay, we're at 3,005. You finish the day almost 75 points above that price level, folks. We end the four o'clock bar right with a high. We don't end it, but we reach a high of 3,079.50, just shy of 75 points. You even back it up for where we were at 945, 3,011. So you're talking about 75 S&P points. And look at this trading range. You're talking about 1% from where we were at about midnight, 3,080, you trade down to 3,050 at about 4 a.m. We're back to 3,080 right at 7 in the morning, currently trading 3,068 on those S&Ps. NQ is barely positive, 10,094. We hit all-time highs on Tuesday, 10,296. We were as low as about 9,900 early in the day yesterday. The Dow, 25,495. Yesterday, within a few points of that 25,000 mark, finished the day about 600 points higher in the Dow for Thursday trading. You see the overnight session, a little bit of volatility, about a 200-point trading range overnight from 25.4 to 25.6. Oil contract, negative 35 cents at 38.37. Crude, talk about some volatility. Wednesday, Wednesday, we get the EIA inventory numbers on crude. We spiked down to below 37.50. Yesterday, we reached a low of 37.08. You trade up more than $2.00 to a price level of 39.35 as of 5 a.m. this morning. And just like that, we've given up about a dollar from that price level with crude trading at 38.39. We got gold contract basically flat at 17.70, was as high as 17.96 earlier in the week. Silver up about six pennies at 18.11. And notes and bonds, we're getting a little higher price and lower yield. The 10-year up three ticks at 139. The 30-year up eight ticks at 178.15. You're looking at a 10-year yield right now of 0.66%. As far as Europe goes, positive action over in Europe. The DAX up about 7 tenths percent for Friday trading. The FTSE 1.4. CAC Carole up about 1.4 as well. And as we come into 8.30, gotta love doing the program at 8.30 every morning. We get a plethora of financial data. Yesterday, it was weekly jobless claims. This morning, personal income, PCI, failing, falling, falling, 4.2% in May. They were looking for a 6.0% drop. Not bad, right? Income only falling just about 4%. The market was looking for 6%. It is so tough to gauge all of these estimates about what's going on. Uh, there's no roadmap, folks. They don't teach you in grad school to become a financial analyst how to calculate personal income when a pandemic is ripping across the globe. Nonetheless, market right now, pretty muted S&P, as we mentioned, down about two points technically, 3,068. Friday trading, talk about a volatile session yesterday. Let's just back it up again. We'll put it on a five minute. Here's your action yesterday. And really, the run begins at about 2.30. You were trading at 3,034. You finished the day about 45 points higher. So the last hour and a half of the day, you see the acceleration. These are five-minute bars. And man, in the span of about 10 minutes, you jumped to almost 20 points in the S&P. Finished the day in this range between about 3,060 and 3,080. We'll see how the day shakes out on that. Jumping around to some of the other news stories out there, and there is a lot going on, folks. Uh, this is the first one that comes up. I mean, just talking about things that are going to happen, folks. I live in Florida, right? TFNM based in Florida. We have quite an acceleration of COVID going on. You're going to start to see 
businesses making the decision to delay opening, closing, whatever it is, Texas pushing back some of their phases of opening in terms of elective surgeries not happening anymore in Texas as they try and make sure they have enough beds to take care of the, num the, the number of people spiking that are getting sick. Warner Brothers, they're going to be pushing back their movie release. You, you saw a, uh, AMC right, coming out with their plan to open their movie theaters. A big portion of that was talking about, I believe, Mulan coming from Disney was supposed to be a big movie. This one as well, Tenet, supposed to be a big movie, pushing those back as the industry just waits for any sense of normalcy. Earnings season. We talked to our man Kevin Hinks yesterday. He liked to say Nike wraps it up. Nike reported their earnings last night quite a miss, quite a miss for sure. We'll pull up their chart first. Now, this one's interesting, folks. I'm a, I'm a long-term bull on Nike, right? You, you want to, in, in this type of environment, if you're a long-term investor, now we're traders too, but uh, there's a lot of value in tremendous companies who are able to transition to doing business online, digitally, electronically, Nike had been ahead of the curve for this, okay? They're down to 60, we're up to 101. We missed big time. They missed by like a billion dollars in revenue for 90 days. We trade from 101 to 97 this morning, okay? But just for some context of where we are in the world of Nike, here is where you're gonna open on Nike, right? Whoops. I mean, we're, we're talking about right up near pre-COVID levels, right up where we were. Yeah, there's some volatility, okay? There's your dive lower on their numbers. Let's get into the numbers before we finish the conversation. Sales tumbled 38%. Digital sales soared 75%, representing about 30% of total revenue as shoppers flocked to Nike's website for sneakers and workout gear. That's quite a number, folks, because I... Now, percentages on small numbers are very, very misleading at times, okay? But Nike, they had already been pushing for the online expansion of what they do. Expenses for shipping, returns also put more pressure on the company's profits. Nike's margins during the fiscal four, fourth quarter shrank to 37.3% from 45.5. Revenue, $6.31 billion, and they were looking for over $7 billion, folks, was the estimate. Is it in here somewhere? They were looking for over $7 billion. Um, and a year ago, 10.18 billion, okay? A loss of 51 cents a share during the period compared with a net income of 989, almost a billion dollars they made in net income a year ago, 62 cents a share. Total revenue down 38%. Sales in North America down 46%. Sales in China down just 3%. Many of Nike stores in the region opening, reopening sooner during the pandemic than in the US. They shut them down in China, they open them back up. US, not quite able to crush that curve and they're gonna stay closed for a while, some of them. Sales at the Converse brand dropped 38%. For the Nike brand, footwear sales fell 35%, apparel down 42%. I mean, just uh, all across the board, except for digital sales, soared 75%. Maybe that's what's keeping Nike anywhere near where it's been recently. Expenses higher as well. Uh, yeah, and there it is. Analysts were calling for the company to, to report earnings of seven cents a share. Remember, they lost like 50 cents a share on revenue of 7.3. However, the impact of the coronavirus pandemic makes it difficult to compare the company's results to estimates. Nonetheless, I saw a headline out here this morning. It was just a good conversation to think about, folks, on Nike. If Nike, a company that was pretty well positioned compared to the pack, you could say, okay, if Nike can miss from 7.3 billion to 6.3 billion, you better watch out for some of these companies that might not be as well positioned for Nike. Because yeah, they missed, but the market's still gonna open them up at basically the highest range they've ever traded at, which is like right around 100, give or take a couple bucks. So we'll see. These retail stocks, Nike trading lower this morning, S&P's negative by five. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot of stocks with action on Friday. We'll be right back to go over them. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. 
Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by about seven points. NASDAQ MQ is negative by six. The Dow, negative 147. Jumping around to some of the other equities with stories this morning. Let me pull it up. There we go. And I want to get the stocks making moves. So Nike, we covered. You had the banks last night. So banks getting a lot of action. First, it comes out that they're going to have regulations relax some of the banks, right, in terms of the Volcker rule yesterday. You saw some of those banks accelerate higher, that they might not have to keep as much of their reserves on hand or trading derivatives, a number of things involved with maybe relaxing the Volcker rule. And then it comes out after the market that the stress tests revealed that some of those banks are pretty close to maybe being insolvent and not having the capital requirements that they're supposed to if things really get dicey with COVID. And folks, I don't think things are going to get really dicey with COVID in terms of the market. They are getting very dicey in terms of what is happening in the country right now. We'll pull up some of those numbers in a moment. But if you don't think there is at least the possibility and probability that is greater than zero, that banks have problems because the economy is suffering, you better wake up to even call it a tail risk, okay? That tail risk exists in a big way as the U.S. has 40,000 cases a day spiking. You have Houston filling up with ICU beds. Uh, and you have Texas, the Republican governor of Texas, shutting down some of the phases of expansion. Uh, let's just get into the numbers, I mean, nationwide. Look at this curve, folks. This is nationwide, okay? That is a steepening curve to the upside. We're looking at the New York Times. There's a plethora of data out there, whatever source you're looking at. New York Times looks at the last 14 days, and they're, they're now putting 30 states, three zero states, in the category of rising numbers in the last four days, folks. Some of the biggest ones, I mean, Florida, Texas, Georgia, Arizona, California dealing with some woes. I mean, you can't stop, folks. Utah, look at this, Arkansas, Nevada, the casinos open. Oklahoma, that is quite a spike over there. Montana, all right? This is going to come to roost when you have, you know, I mean, we just talked about it, right? Movie theaters pushing back their releases, okay? You have Texas shutting down some of what's going on. You have, I mean, our, our office, TFNN, based in St. Petersburg, Florida, restaurants shutting down for staff. 
testing positive all the time. This is going to play into the market, folks. It's just a matter of time. So wake up. Be aware. All right. Quite a hotbed. I mean, the entire state of Florida is almost looking like a hotbed right now being in Florida. Some of the states that really crushed it, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Massachusetts, right, where it was hit hardest, where they really had to rein things in. Um, and they did. And their curves much different than what we're dealing with in the likes of the states of Florida. For Florida, we had our second day over 5,000 cases yesterday. Quite the curve there as well. We'll see how this shakes out, folk, folks. But uh, it's a big number and it's going to start hitting the market. And there's only so much that the Fed can do. Okay. Amazon, how about it? Amazon, they got a couple things going on. So number one, they paid about a billion dollars to buy self-driving startup Zooks, according to uh, online publication, The Information, citing sources separately. Amazon's buying the naming rights to Seattle's NHL arena, planning to call it, quote unquote, Climate Pledge Arena. It's a great piece of marketing and it's a great piece of climate awareness, folks, in recognition of its status as the first fully carbon neutral arena. Uh, Amazon's also the subject of positive analyst reports at Deutsche Bank, which is raising earnings estimates and upping its price target. That seems like a uh, price to sell. 33, 33 a share. And SunTrust, they upped them by a bit by 67 bucks to 34 hundred. I mean, the way Amazon moves, it could reach that by the end of this month. Next month, we're trading higher this morning on Amazon, 27.82, 27.96. The high from Wednesday cannot hold Amazon down. Let's jump around to some of the other tech stocks as we look for the open as well. Microsoft, just a hair under 200 at 199.95 right now. Apple shares, 364.58. I mean, all these tech stocks right up there near all-time highs. Facebook, quite an anomaly I'm going to cover. Uh, you got Verizon out there pulling ads from Facebook. One, I talked about yesterday, one of the biggest ad agencies pulling their ads. One of their customers, BMW, among with you know many other huge companies. Uh, and how that plays out in terms of the, the blowback for a company like Facebook. And where are we? Come on. There we go. Verizon pulling advertising from Facebook and Instagram. OK, regulators, you could argue some do uh, not doing their job in terms of what Facebook is able to put out there. Lies, political ads, what it is. Some companies now feeling the public scrutiny, the public pressure to say, you know what, we're not going to advertise with these two companies. Now, guess what, folks? We'll see how long this lasts, because there's nothing like what this world has seen in terms of Facebook for targeting, the amount of targeting and, and, and direct advertising to consumers that it allows. I mean, they got billions of users. We'll see if companies can manage the landscape if they choose not to advertise on that company. But uh, this is not what Facebook or Facebook shareholders want to see, folks. When you see the beginning of your advertisers saying, you know what? Regulators might not be clamping down on you, but we're not going to be voting with our dollars, right? We're not going to be giving you our dollars for what you're doing. Verizon said on Thursday it's pulling advertising. Uh, Facebook dealing with some woes there. They've already started in terms of uh, a number of companies. We'll see how that hits. But you see the hit on Facebook this week, trading from 245 down to almost 230 yesterday on that company. Okay, other stocks in actions. So DraftKings. They're rated a buy in new coverage. The firm sees a number of catalysts, including the return of live sports and a potential acceleration of gambling legislation due to COVID-19. Hey, one of the things out there, folks, I'm super biased, but there is no reason why in the state of Florida I am not allowed to uh, play online poker. All right. You want to say sports gambling? I I. There is a tremendous amount of skill in the game of poker, folks. Short term, a lot of luck. Long term, all skill. OK, there is no reason I shouldn't be able to play a game of skill online at a time when the Hard Rock is open. I can go down to the Hard Rock and and, and lose my entire savings of a million dollars if I wanted to, if I had it. OK, uh, yet I don't have the ability to online gamble at a time like this. All right. So you got DraftKings, um, sports gambling and completion. Hopefully they do get something like this done. All right. I uh, I used to play a lot of poker in my younger days. I have a lot of friends that I know of who are whether it's a professional gambler, professional poker player, uh, whether it's in Las Vegas, Florida, New Jersey, and at a time when 
casinos just shut down, folks. There were a lot of people hit real hard, you know? I mean, you, you, you look at it, I mean, casinos just shut down overnight. If you were somebody that was playing poker for a living, there's a lot of people out there that do that, folks. It's not far off from being a professional trader, just so you're aware, okay? You're looking at probabilities, you're looking at statistics, you're making risk-reward analysis, all right? And those people just shut down instantly. There's no reason why there shouldn't be an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? Uh, why do people in Florida have the ability to bet on horse racing whenever they want, which is because of lobbyists, and you can't play poker. So if you ever get the opportunity, stress that to your politicians. There's my speech. You can't, didn't even plan it, folks, but it's craziness that I can log on with my credit card, dump my entire savings of credit onto an online horse racing website, and yet when it comes to playing online poker, can't do it. I got to go down to the Hard Rock and play during a time that COVID spiking tremendously. So, okay, big lots. Talk about an acceleration here. The discount retailer said it's seeing a continuation of strong demand that began in mid-April. It now expects second quarter comp sales to be up. And check out this one, folks. Look at that pop from 34 to almost 40 on big lots. Stay tuned, folks. Come back, see what else we have on tap for Friday trading. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by Bam! as well as whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of tfnet.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by about nine. NASDAQ negative by nine as well. Dow Jones negative by 166. And you see, since seven in the morning, we've given up about 20 S&P points right now. Call it 19 points. Quite the trading range, folks. It's not often you get 1% left and right in this market, if not 2% or 3% almost uh, yesterday. The VIX right now, 32.39. Wednesday hitting that spike of 37.12. Some of the other news stories catching my eye this morning. Mortgage bailouts suddenly swell as homeowners face new struggles. Folks, keep your eye on this story. It is a big one and it is going to play out, okay? You have the number of active mortgage forbearance plans rising by 79,000 in the past week. So just in the last week, you have numbers increasing for the amount of people that cannot pay their mortgage, okay? At a time when you have 1.5 million initial weekly jobless claims, folks, this is not the V turnaround when you have right now, as of Tuesday, 4.68 million homeowners in forbearance, okay? Allowing them to de delay their mortgage payments for at least three months and up to a year represents 8.8% of all active mortgages, up from 87 Folks, this number is not supposed to keep climbing as we go into July and August because you only have a year in this program and you have to pay that back. I mean, to get into it, right, it talks about the mortgage bailout program. Um, allows borrowers to miss monthly payments for at least three months, potentially up to a year. Those payments can be remitted either in repayment plans, loan modifications, or when the home is sold or the mortgage refinanced. This is all gonna come to roost in the next 12 months and time is flying and that number is still going up, okay? So that may play into things, keep your eye on it because that is not rebounding at all. It's actually getting worse, folks. It's actually getting worse and we're about to come into July. Talk about getting worse, Wirecard auditors, yeah, this is, this is some PR spin, folks, okay? You got the Ernst & Young saying, oh man, we're auditors, but there was such an elaborate fraud that led to missing billions. Yeah, well, good luck on that one, folks. What is the point of an auditor when they can't find out that you just say you got billions and they don't even research it? We'll see how that plays out. Sad story in terms of the amount of missing money and how that plays out. All right, folks, stay tuned. Should be an interesting Friday in the markets. S&P's negative by 10. We got our man Larry Pezzavento coming up next with Trade What You See live program.